Hello out there and thank you for joining us. My name is Carrie Lynn. I'm a National Accounts Manager here at Warmly Yours and I'm joined by my superstar colleague Scott of our tech support team. Say hello Scott. Hello everybody. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about finding and installing the perfect towel warmer. We can move on there to the next slide. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask at the bottom of the screen or in the sidebar chat. Uh, even in our Facebook Live, you can chat us there. So without ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so starting with our outline again today, we'll be talking about our towel warmers. This includes our newest features and addition, the dual connect models. Um, going a bit over details about the installation of our towel warmers. Definitely helpful that we have Scott here from tech support team on the line to help us go it all over, all, over all of it in detail. Say that five times fast. Mm -hmm. Moving on there. Okay, so speaking of details, now our towel warmers, uh, they are electric towel warmers and they can be easily installed as hardwired or plug-in. Um, they're designed to uh, be a, a use of a heat for warming towels uh, with our radiant heating. Um, personally, I've had a number of cu customers who ask about how they can use their towel warmers, uh, if they're designed to have enough heat to warm the towels or rooms or otherwise. Uh, can you talk a bit about expectations here, Scott? Well, um, correct me if I'm wrong, because I usually am wrong, uh, but I, I think we were going to talk about the expectations in a little bit. Is that correct? Um, but anyway, I'll be we glad can. to. Um, yeah, but one thing we need to, uh, a lot of people don't understand, there's a couple different kinds of towel warmers that are electric. Um, some of them are filled with fluid and have an electric um, heater uh, screwed into them, like a heating element, but they are fluid filled. Um, and those can sometimes be called um, electric. And then our product is actually electric with a dry heating wire inside. And what difference that makes is the heating wire um, goes throughout the towel warmer over, you know, through each rung and along uh, portions of the sides to go from one rung down the side to the other rung. Whereas those other products with the heating element that screws into the base and it heats the fluid, that takes a long time to heat up because that heating fluid runs kind of like a convection current. So it'll run to the top and then it'll slowly uh, warm up from the top down until mm -hmm. eventually all that water makes its way over to the heating element on the side. So those you'll find out those are um, uh, not really hydronic units. Hydronic units are very popular in Europe and those simply are a, a tube that is like a piece of plumbing that's hooked up to a hot water uh, uh, supply and it works this way like through a radiator. So mm -hmm. that is a little bit different. That's a hydronic one. The uh, heating element inside a liquid filled unit is kind of like a hybrid. So people call it electric and then ours is an electric wire that's heating up. And of those three, usually the heating wire is uh, one of the fastest ones to heat up because it's simply a wire inside of that, uh, those, those heating tubes. So when you're buying a towel warmer, you want to find out really does it have a heating element that heats liquid or is it a, 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 a unit that's filled with electric heating wire? There's a big difference between those two types of electric units. So hopefully that'll take some of the mystery out of buying the towel warmer and what to look for when it comes to that. Um, then you know what, uh, what exact questions to ask. So I just thought it'd be good to talk about that um, today mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't really understand that part. Yes. Thank you, Scott. Very great mm -hmm. points. Okay, so when talking with my customers over the years, I can say that primarily uh, the applications of these obviously are ideal for bathrooms, right? It makes sense. Um, generally, that's where you have your bath towels and that's where they're placed. But uh, towel warmers, you know, they can help bring the spa experience to your own home. You know, not only do we, you know, have warmly yours floor heating where you take the chill off the floors, but you can add a bit of coziness to your towels too. So, you know, this brings quite a bit of the luxury spa-like feel you know, right into your own home. Um, they can be controlled with a timer, like you said, so that's nice. Uh, and you could pre-program your unit to come on and off. Um, but before we go uh, even more detail about the technical side of things, I'd like to share, um, 
you know, a lot of times customers ask about the placement of the towel warmer in their bathroom design, believe it or not. Um, you know, so whether or not they could place it inside of a large or open walk-in shower or next to the tub. Um, so when we talk about placement as far as ideal in bathrooms, um, can you just take a moment really quick to expound a bit on the recommended placement for towel warmers in the bathroom, Scott? Yes, and that's why I kind of wanted to talk about the different types of towel warmers because mm -hmm. here's where we get the question. Um, electric towel warmers, what be it the uh, the uh, wired units like we sell or the electric element with the heating water, anything that's electric is not going to be allowed in the shower enclosure or in the tub enclosure. Whether the shower is 25 feet long and right. the shower head is over here and the towel warmer is 25 feet away, that's still considered in a shower. So that is not going to be allowed. Um, and actually, you don't want to be standing in water and touching an electrified unit. So right. what people will say to me is, well, I've seen them in showers before. Well, what the people have seen in the showers before are usually the ones that are hooked up to hot water coming from a water heater. And those are not electric. They are just hot water radiator type towel warmers. So um, if you have seen them in the shower or above a, t a tub before, those are probably the hot water units that are being fed hot water like a radiator are. Um, electric units are not allowed in the tub enclosure or in the shower. Excellent. Thank you, Scott. I felt it necessary to bring those points up here. So um, we can move to the next slide now. So our popular models, most popular, they've been upgraded to the new, new dual connection option. Um, you kind of touched, uh, we kind of touched on that, just teased about it a little bit early on, but tell us about what that actually means, Scott, and what they can expect when they open the box with these new models. These new models will come with a, a plug and a line cord attached to them. And um, that allows you to use them as either type, a hardwired unit, which actually wires directly into the wall and is connected to electricity, electricity directly, or um, fed electricity from a timer. Uh, they are 120 volt units. They are not available in 240. They're 120 volt units. And what this allows you to do is this allows you to, hey, if I want to put this over here on this wall and there's a plug right below it, why don't I just plug it in and make it simple? And then I can use a control that allows me to control the towel warmer either through a Wi-Fi switch or through a timer that plugs into the wall and the towel warmer plugs into it. Um, we'll be talking about those controls a little bit later in the in the webinar, but um, this allows you to do either type of installation. If you don't have a plug handy, you simply have an electrician come in, follow the directions, cut the plug off and the line cord to the specific length you need it, and then hook it through the leg into the wall, and that way you don't have one of those unsightly metal um, uh, covers on the wall below the towel warmer. It actually goes through the leg into the wall and you don't even see the electrical connection at all. So that's going to allow you to do whatever type of installation you'd like to do with your towel warmer. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now with these uh, new models coming into you bundled in a nice package, like you mentioned, you know, you're able to modify them. You definitely want to take into account that we recommend, you mentioned the magic E word electrician, uh, that you work with a licensed electrician. So why is that important, Scott? Well, if you have a plug-in unit, it's simply you attach it to the wall and plug it in. It, that's that's like any normal appliance. That doesn't mm -hmm. require an electrician. But when it comes to um, these hardwired units, you're going to actually have an electrician pull electrical wire for you from the breaker panel or it's coming from the switch. So you need to get power from the breaker panel, which is on going to be on a GFCI protected breaker. You're mm -hmm. going to send that power to the timer and then from the timer to the towel warmer or directly from the GFCI protected circuit breaker to the towel warmer itself. So that's where you are. We wouldn't expect any DIYer to run their own electrical circuit, to do their own electrical wiring. That should all be done by a licensed and bonded electrician. Right. I'll note, I saw a comment here from Patrick. He 
I think it was back when we were talking about the dual connection. He noted, brilliant idea. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> Our product team, uh, they tend to lean on the brilliant side. So it's glad that you all came out with that for us. So thanks for, for noting that. Um, mm -hmm. As far as uh, the overheat protection, this uh, new model, it does come with a built-in overheat protection, uh, which what we call is TempSmart. Um, what's, what's that about, Scott, and, and how is that helpful? Well, what they've done is they've taken um, technology used in the electrical motor business for years and years and years mm -hmm. and put a an over temp um, control inside that when it's when it's not over temp, you have two pieces of metal touching each other inside this little tiny switch. And when it goes over a certain temperature, the metal pulls apart and it opens the circuit and it stops heating. When it starts to cool off and gets down to the correct temperature, the little piece inside will make connection again. And then the product Product will heat up and it will continue to do that anytime that it gets over 176 degrees. So that's a very, very um, great feature. And what I love about this picture here is it actually shows that there is a on off switch or power switch on the lower right side. If you notice, if you look there in the background of the picture, you can see the electrical cord coming out of the leg. So um, that's on the same side. So when you see the electrical cord, if it's going to be mounted in the leg, if you look on the upright, which is what we're showing you here, the bottom of the upright, on that same side is where your power switch you're going, is, is going to be found. And you would be surprised by the number of people that buy our towel warmers that are not aware mm -hmm. that there is a power or on-off switch located on the towel warmer itself. But it is there, and it will light up blue when it's pushed in and it's receiving power. Awesome. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. And sometimes I get customers who call in and they say it's not working and they forget to hit that little toggle switch. So it's good that we know mm -hmm. that too. Um, yep. So yeah, currently here uh, on our website, we show you uh, the Infinity and Riviera, both from our classic model collection. Uh, that Infinity model on the left, uh, it does have 10 sleek bars. It's a nice classic looking towel rack that's conveniently sized for your large bath towel. Uh, it's made of stainless steel and features a beautiful brushed metal finish. I kind of feel like my inner Vanna White coming out. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the middle, uh, we've got the Riviera and it's available in either brushed or polished stainless steel finishes. Uh, it has a slight difference in features uh, than the Infinity model as it has nine curved uh, towel bars, uh, and it's designed to dry and warm your large bath towel. Uh, but stay tuned because we do have some models being added to the Dual Connect family, like the Sierra model you see here on the far right. Uh, it's also a current design in our classic collection, uh, and it does have a generous uh, eight bar design. It comes uh, with the polished stainless finish. So be on the lookout um, and stay tuned for this and upcoming models in the near future. Okay. Uh, Patrick had a question here, and it's a great question that we get every single day here at Warmly Yours, yes. and that is, how many rungs per towel typically is is there a rule? Um, we, the rule is no more than two towels on mm -hmm. the towel warmer at a time, and we're going to be talking about that uh, in a little bit. Um, but so you don't. What the idea is, you want each towel to be over the top rung because mm -hmm. that allows the towel to receive heat all the way down. Um, you wouldn't want to put it on the bottom rung and then let it hang because then only about a two inch section of your towel right in the middle will be warm. The mm -hmm. idea is to put it at the top of the towel warmer. That way it gets warmth all the way down. Um, and, and that's one thing to keep in mind is you can kind of control how warm your towel gets by placing one towel or two towels or having one towel and opening it up or mm -hmm. closing or folding it over. The simple rule is when it comes to towel warmers, we talk about performance. My towel warmer is too warm. My towel warmer isn't warm enough. Well, you don't really have to worry about the too warm now because these will all have the temperature control in them so they won't overheat. But mm -hmm. if somebody calls and says, yeah, my towel warmer, the towels aren't getting as warm as I was hoping. Well, what you simply need to keep in mind is if you're looking at the towel warmer, the less of the towel warmer that you can physically see, if it looks like a lump of towels on the wall, that means the towel is covering the towel warmer. The more of the towel warmer you cover, the warmer the towels will be because you're trapping more heat. Mm -hmm. If your towels are too warm, what you can do is you can take the towel and you can fold it over. And what that will do is it'll let you see more of the towel warmer. The more metal you see, the more 
heat is allowed to escape. So if you want your towels warmer, cover the towel warmer. If you want them cooler, take them and fold them over and have more towel warmer visible because you're working with more trapped heat equals hotter towels, less trapped heat equals cooler towels. So that's a great question, Patrick. Thank you so much for asking that. That's how you can kind of control the towel warmer and, uh -huh. and how your towels feel. Um, if you are notoriously getting towels that are too warm, you might actually have a bath sheet. Bath sheets are different than bath towels because bath sheets are larger. And if your towel gets too warm, try going from a really thick towel to a thinner towel. If it's not warm enough, go from a thinner towel to a thicker towel. So by changing the thickness of your towels and the amount of area of your towel warmer that's covered, you can actually control the temperature of your towels and change the outcome of, of, of how hot you want them to be when you get out of the shower. So great question, Patrick. Yes, definitely a great question. Thank you, Patrick. That kind of helps go into our next slide there. You kind of helping us with our presentation. <laughs> uh, we do have uh, a variety of towel warmers uh, in addition to those that we shared. They come in different sizes, you know, finishes, bar designs, like you see here. Uh, myself, Scott, you know, we've worked with Warmly Yours now for uh, double digits in years now. We're not going to go into numbers, but uh, I can certainly remember us, uh, you know, beginning to showcase our new products. Um, and with starting with our towel warmers, we were winning uh, some best of show awards at the kitchen and bath industry show and things like that uh, but when we came out with them at that time we practically only had one or two finishes and so now we offer a number of finishes and sizes uh, in our standard models um, you see here the gold uh, matte black oil rub bronze I remember that being asked for a lot. Uh, polished stainless steel, brush stainless, it's quite a variety now. So um, when you visit our website and shop around Patrick or anyone else for a model that best suits your tastes, you'll be able to see the variety that we offer at a glance. Um, you can filter choices by size, finish, model type, uh, and even see that some are available to purchase directly from us, while others will be exclusive to outside e-tailers. Um, but either way, regardless of wherever you purchase the product from, you know, we still offer our 24-7 technical support uh, should you or your electrician need assistance with wiring your towel warmer. Um, and then if you need help programming your towel warmer to turn on or off. So Scott knows he's, he's taken plenty of those calls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So that's so, a great lead into the next to the next slide. Yeah. How do you control a towel warmer, right? Exactly. We're going to talk about that for a second. So here are the four models ranging in features and the types of connections they allow for. Scott, you want to walk us through those controls? Yeah, these controls um, are obviously pretty self-explanatory. And one thing... Um, if you ever have a question about that's why I brought up the voltages of the towel warmers right mm -hmm. off the bat, because these towel warmers are 120 volts. Most of the timers you see out in the wild at big box stores, those are nine times out of 10 or even more often going to be 120 volt uh, timers and 120 volt controls. So mm -hmm. um, if you don't get something here that you are um, enamored with, there are plenty of them out there too. But we try to uh, supply you with all the great choices, uh, a hardwired Wi-Fi switch, which would be used for hardwired installations. Um, they come with different color face plates also. Um, the hardwired programmable timer, which is once again a great uh, control for your product. And the hardwired four setting countdown timer, which allows you to set it for various um, uh, durations of time. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of people will ask, well, how long should I keep my product on for? Do I keep it on 24 hours? You can, if you like. You don't have to use a timer. Um, but if you would like to use a timer, keep in mind that most towels will reach their maximum temperature between 45 minutes to 60 minutes. So if you mm -hmm. heat it less than 45 minutes, it's not going to get hot as it can. And if you heat it for more than 60 minutes, it's really not accomplishing much because it's already reached its maximum temperature. So to keep in mind, when is the, what's the sweet spot of giving, getting my, temp my temperature of my towel warmer to the sweet spot? It's somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour, and that will reach the peak heat. So that's why we also suggest that if you are going to take a shower at the same time every day, just get a, a timer 
the pro, uh, hardwired programmable timer, and you can set it up uh, like a, an old-fashioned timer there, or you can do the hardwired switch, which would allow you to uh, use if this, then that, IFTT, if this, then that, IFTTT <laughs> um, <One more. laughs> protocol to set up that. <laughs> it's hard to remember all that stuff. I can remember the digits, but that's about it. Um, right. It will it will allow you to set up um, through um, you know if if this then that um, if it, at six o'clock have it come on and shut off at nine o'clock every day if you'd like um, if you want to do um, controlling by plugging it in um, if you're doing the plug-in version then the plug-in six setting countdown timer with repeat function will work great for that because it's like Christmas lights. Uh -huh. um, if you have um, Christmas lights, they sometimes have a two hour, four hour, eight hour control, then it has repeat. Well, as soon as you press that repeat, it means it comes on the same time every day. So you can do that with the uh, plug-in unit also. So it offers you pretty much the same controllability without doing the hardwired cutting the walls up and, and running wires and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I like that, how we have the controls you know, kind of catering to all the different needs, you know, be it Wi-Fi plug-in, you know, it all speaks to whatever your preference might be for sure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so now uh, here comes a really fun part. We're going to talk a bit in detail about how to actually install our towel warmers. So uh, first things first, um, let's move on to that next slide there. There we go. Uh, when you open up your unit, it you open it up, it arrives in a box. You'll want to take out the installation manual. Uh, check and make sure that all the parts that you need, uh, that they're all there and included in the box. It doesn't ever hurt to double check for such things. You just want to make sure that you have what you need there, right? Uh, and then from there, you can start pre-assembling your towel warmer. So why do we say uh, pre-assemble, Scott? Can you share a bit further about that as well? Well, yeah, we want to make sure that... Um... And I'm going to show you on the next the next slide is going to show you that. But what what I'd like to show you in this picture is see how that we've uh, taken the parts out of the kit, out of the bag, and kind of put them all together to make sure that there's four of these, that there's four of those, that we have the right number of anchors, and and that sort of thing. And if it doesn't match up, then just give us a call, and we will get you um, either the dimensions of the screws. So if you need to put it up today, you can go to the hardware store go in there and take the dimensions and say, I mm -hmm. need this screw and they will give you that screw. Or if you'd like to, you know, if you don't, if the time is not of the essence, obviously if we didn't send you enough screws, we owe them to you. We'll be glad to send them to you to, 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 so you can put it up. But just keep in mind, if you get in a bind and you need to do the installation today, give us a call. We'll give you the dimensions of the stuff you need and you can go get that taken care of. Any hardware store will have these screws. And if not, we'll be glad to get you the parts that you need. But the first thing is to take them out the day you get it and make sure that right. everything is there. Even if you're not installing until three weeks from now, make sure everything is there. So if there's a problem, you can let us know and we'll get the product to you. Yeah. Just so, what Carrie, yeah so what Carrie Lynn was uh, alluding to is the fact that when, if you're an engineer, you understand about uh, tolerances and how you can have uh, uh, some products a little um, too big and a little too small, but still fall into a tolerance of production. And um, when you stack up those tolerances, sometimes things can get a little out of whack. Well, mm -hmm. what we want to do is we do get a lot of phone calls from people saying, hey, can you send me the dimensions? Because I want to get the wall ready for uh, putting the towel warmer up. Well, really, that's the last thing you want to do. You don't want to do it that way. What you want to do is you want to wait until you get your towel warmer because what you're going to do is the dimensions we give you are nominal. Your dimension may be a little bit this way. It may be a little bit this way. It may be a little bit that way or that way. But when you start building up those tolerances, one screw up here and the screw up here may match, but it may not match the screw down here. So what we suggest you do is wait until you get your towel warmer, put the legs on it, screw it down, and that way the measurements that you're going to be making are yours. They have to be correct because you just did them. So what we suggest you do is we take the hardware out of the box, put the legs on it, then tighten them down and then use the box as a template because mm -hmm. then this is going to accomplish a couple things for you that you may not think about right off the top of your head. First of all, you're going to make this template and it's going to allow you to make sure that the, 
the, the, your, your dimensions aren't correct. But what it also does is if you take this template, it allows you to put it up on the wall and see, hey, do I like it here? Do I like it here? Do I like it a little bit over this way? Hey, let's try it on the other wall. That way you have the dimensions of your towel warmer right there and you can move it around from wall to wall to see where you're happiest with because that will allow you to make your electrical connections in that spot. So what you can do is you can take the markings that you made on your template. Once you're happy with the placement, make the marks on the wall. And then if you're doing a hard wire installation, that will tell the electrician exactly where he needs to supply the power to. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you're an engineering person like myself, you understand about tolerance stacking and how sometimes even on um, the most carefully built unit, you may have a leg that's a, an 18th or 16th of an inch out this way and up here maybe a 16th of an inch out that way. If your tolerance is an eighth of an inch, that's with intolerance, right? But when you start stacking them all together, it may be a little bit out of whack a little bit. But you're not going to be getting a towel warmer where the legs are splayed out <laughs> all in <laughs> different directions. It's simply we want to make sure you have a uh, you have a good connection. And where this is very, very important, it may not be the end of the world if you're working on a drywall wall, but you do not want to take measurements on a tile wall, wall and put them up before you get your product. Because really, yeah. a tile wall, you can't change it or paint it a little bit to, to cover up where you think the hole might be. With a tile wall, you need to commit to that tile wall. You need to make mm -hmm. sure that your measurements are exact. And that's why if you do have a tile wall um, at the bottom and maybe a, um, a, a drywall at the top, we can talk to you about how do you do that because you're going to have different depths. The tile is going to be out here. The drywall is going to be in a little bit closer. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, but if you're dealing with tile, don't make markings before you get your uh, towel warmer. Excellent. So this is where this is where the tech guy goes berserk and everybody goes, oh, no, you're breaking my mind. But mm -hmm. it's so important to do this because you, we want you to have a great successful installation. And just this little bit of, of webinar can help you get over the problems that we get calls in the middle of the night about is what we're trying to do really, right? We're trying to give mm -hmm. you the information before you get stuck. So think about um, you want to try the, the power. If we take a look at our, our towel warmers, the power is on the right side at the right side at the bottom near where the power switch is. So you want the left side to, to get into a stud if you can. It doesn't have to be, but ideally, if you can line up the left side with a stud in your wall, that's going to give you a very sturdy connection. Also, since we know the power is in the lower right, we get this question every day. How do I make the power go to the left side? Well, there is no magic wand. You can't change the connection in the towel warmer. It's here, but what you can do is you can take the towel warmer and you can turn it 180 degrees and make the power connection in the upper left hand side mm -hmm. instead of the lower right hand side so that's how you can change if you need the power to be on the left side you take it 180 degrees and then it becomes the power point is in the upper left hand corner but keep in mind you have to be kind of tall to turn the switch on and off because now the mm -hmm. power switch is going to be in the upper left hand side too right right well, that kind of goes into, you know, we got some slides coming up that kind of lead into that. So if you want to just kind of feel free to continue here, Scott, about as far as uh, the mounting brackets and preparing for the electrical, feel free mm -hmm. to take it away here. So what we did is we used our template to find out where we wanted on the wall and then we made our marks and now that's where we're going to put our mounting that's where we're going to put our mounting brackets because what we do is we put the mounting brackets on the wall and then what we do is we take the towel warmer and we push it onto there and tighten it down to hold it in place. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to be doing the power leg connection, you're probably going to, or even the, uh, the normal connection um, on our traditional towel warmers, you're going to want to have some help. You're going to want to have someone hold the towel warmer while you're making the electrical connections and then pushing it on. So you're definitely going to want to have some help because you've put the brackets on and now we need to get the towel warmer onto the brackets. But before we do that, we have to make our electrical connections. So mm -hmm. make sure your brackets are level. You don't want a towel warmer that's listing one side or the other. You want to make sure that it's nice and square and make sure your power leg connections are going to be available there. If your electrician's already been there, then please have somebody hold the towel warmer while you're making your connections and then pushing it 
onto the wall. Right. Okay. And there you have it. So preparing electrical, be it standard or dual, you know, a couple things you'll want to keep in mind, some of those you touched on. Um, just kind of share again about, you know, preparing the spot for the towel warmer control if needed as well. Right. So what you're going to do is you're going to need to decide, do you want your towel warmer control right next to it, which a lot of people choose, or do you want to put it by the doorway? You can put it really anywhere you want to in the room because what the electrician is going to do is he's going to get power, he or she is going to get power to that switch. And mm -hmm. then they are going to run power from that switch over to the electrical spot behind the towel warmer. Mm -hmm. So that's why an electrician is needed when you do a hardwired connection. So think about, do you want a control? If so, where do you want it? Because the power is going to go from the breaker to the switch, to the towel warmer, or it's going to go from the breaker to the towel warmer. Mm -hmm. The electrician is going to help you make those connections, but that's how the power goes. Breaker, switch, towel warmer. Breaker, switch, towel warmer. You got it. Okay. So when mm -hmm. with mounting the towel warmer now, you know, pretty much with everything as far as preparing electrical is done, the electrical connections are completed. You know, what are the next steps then uh, for the installers? I know that we have a couple of points that we address on the next slide uh, as far as, you know, what to expect and what they can do then. Then once you get your electrical connections made, either through the power leg or through the uh, individual, um, the, the, the fifth leg, down here, if you take a look at the presentation down here, is a traditional unit with the electrical connection that goes through a tube into a wall plate. Um, what you're going to do is once you get your electrical connection, you mm -hmm. get the towel warmer up on the wall, and then there's going to be little set screws that you're going to use to get that tightened to the wall, and that's what's going to hold it up. Now, you made a great point about those electric, uh, those uh, those plastic caps, <laughs> the plastic caps, and the and the switch. Go ahead and and, and talk about those because uh, even as a sales rep, you get this question all the time too. <laughs> all the time, all of the time. They're like, "Well, what are these little white things that are on there? It wasn't in the picture. It's just plastic shipping caps. We just have them at the top and the bottom of the towel warmer. They're there to make sure that your towel warmer still looks pretty when you get it, and that it's not all banged up." And so. You could simply just remove those off of the towel warmer um, and dispose of those. It's not a problem. Um, and then you'll also want to test that on off switch as well um, if you have the control uh, as well as the control if applicable. But just make sure you test it, that it's working well. Give us a call if you have any questions with regard to how to make sure that you test it properly. Um, that's what we're here for. Like I said, 24 7, any questions, we'll take them day or night. Um, but it's always best to do it when you get the material as soon as you're doing the testing, as soon as you're doing the install, do it right away and get on the phone with us right away. If it's not Scott, it's another one of our teammates on uh, the tech support team. They know what they're talking about, folks. You were going to say something, Scott? So, yeah, the, the good thing... Yeah, the good thing about the towel warmer power switch is it lights up. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to do any troubleshooting, the towel warmer will not be warm unless the on-off switch is blue or, right. or on the older units, red. Um, so mm -hmm. if that switch is not lighting up, it means it's probably not getting power. And the reason I love this right. picture here because it shows the switch over here on the wall that's controlling it. So for the towel warmer to be warm, this switch has to be sending power to the towel warmer and the towel warmer has to be uh, turned on. A lot of people, as we mentioned earlier, don't know that there's a power switch at the bottom of this rung and it's right, right. here at the bottom. So The little blue one that we were talking about. Yep. Or mm -hmm. red. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. And Patrick is, is on his way to the... Um, um, the triple crown here. He's at the triple crown. Yeah. He's looking for the cycle. If you're playing baseball, um, <laughs> is there a recommended height from the floor? And we just had a tech meeting about this today. And one thing you want to keep in mind when placing the towel warmer is you're going to be using your template. Remember if you have mm -hmm. toddlers in the house who are old enough to walk and, but don't, listen very well. I mean, I'm, I'm still a child of, of my father and I don't <laughs> listen very well either, but, um, you want to make sure that if you have toddlers that the towel warmer isn't too low to the floor. 
mm-hmm. because you don't want a to- toddler grabbing onto a towel warmer because a towel warmer has to be hot for it to work, right? right. Just like a, just like an iron has to be hot for it to iron. So, uh, Patrick, another great question. You've you've gotten the triple crown. You're waiting for the cycle. If you're a baseball fan, the recommended mm-hmm. height from the floor is whatever you're comfortable with, and. The only thing to think about that is who else is in your house. If you're if you're if you're five foot tall and your um, roommate is six seven, obviously you need to make it so both people can get a towel over the top rung. So mm-hmm. that's what you want to look for, and you want to make sure it's high enough away from a toddler to grab. Right, right, exactly. Good point. Triple crown, like you said. <laughs> okay, so, uh, you know, we even leave room for the questions. Uh, you know, we've had some throughout the uh, presentation here, which have been really great to kind of keep us thinking and moving on our feet. Uh, but, you know, uh, we do have also some room for folks to give questions to us, and they're submitted ahead of time uh, online beforehand. Uh, I know that some were passed along to our tech superstar here. Uh, did you want to take that time to address those now, Scott? Sure. Um, okay. The first question is from M.E. And M.E. asks, how quickly do the towels warm? Can they be set with a timer? So hopefully we address that question for M.E. And uh, we know that the, the sweet spot for a towel warmer is usually a towel will be reach its maximum temperature 45 to 60 minutes. And um, If that's the case, then you want to make sure that the towel is as warm as it can be before you get out of the shower. So ideally, you would set this timer to start 45 minutes or so before your scheduled shower, if it's the same time every day. So yes, the answer to that is you can set it with the timer, and 45 to 60 minutes is probably the time you want to start it ahead of your scheduled shower time. Mm -hmm. Um, If you live in a household with a bunch of people, you probably have a scheduled time already. Um, So you might want to make sure that the, even if you're you're not the first, that it is warm for the first person if you're using two Mm -hmm. towels. So uh, thank you, ME, for that. They'll also want to make sure that the other person puts, um, you know, a towel back on there for the next person. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So the next question is, how can we replace the towel warmer with floor heating? What is the ratio for such replacement? Can we use them as radiators? Well, this is why I brought up the radiator thing at the beginning because some towel warmers that are hooked up to hot water pumps, hot water Mm -hmm. heaters um, are designed as radiators and those are the ones that you will see inside of a shower usually. Um, I hadn't to be, I'm old and I hadn't seen a towel warmer ever until I went to the UK and went through there and in my bathroom was a towel warmer and I had never had any idea what it was. I touched it, it was really hot. So um, Mm -hmm. I learned about towel warmers then and it was hooked up to a hot water water or to a water heater and that's how it worked and those usually are used as radiators so that's a great question but one thing we didn't touch on and I'm glad we saved this 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 question is if you're looking to heat a room you'll usually see a room heater that's labeled as certain BTUs this is a 5000 BTU heater this is a 6000 BTU heater this heater is 7500 BTUs well how do you know what that is in relation to what your towel warmer is? Well, if you've purchased a towel warmer or if you're looking at towel warmers, it'll tell you what the wattage is of them. And it's so close to pi, but it's dangerously not that close to pi. Pi is 3.14. But BTU, when you're figuring BTUs, is 3.41 BTUs per watt. So if you take a 500 watt product, I can't do that fast enough in my head, but I'm going to take, (laughs) let's say that the towel warmer, let's say that the towel warmer is a hundred watts. Okay. A hundred watts times 3.41 is 341 BTUs. So there you go. That's how you can figure what BTUs I'm dealing with. Take the wattage of your particular towel warmer, multiply it by 3.41. That'll give you the number of BTUs that your towel warmer supplies. So if you have a, um, a uh, an electric baseboard heater in your bathroom and it's 3,000 BTUs, you can mm-hmm. then do divide that by 3.41 and get an idea of how many watts it needs to be. A lot of times you'll see that the towel warmers really can't replace a baseboard heater, but they can add extra heat into a room because they are supplying BTUs. So that's how you can do apple to apple uh, comparisons between radiators and towel warmers and see how much heat they will supply. Excellent. 
Okay, well, thanks for that. Was there, uh, I didn't see anything here. Was there anything further from, uh, nope. did we get another one? Uh, nope. We got another one from Patrick. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he says, how long does it take for a towel to drive? Thank you, Olivia. I just checked Facebook as well. No questions on Facebook at this time. But how long does it take for a towel to dry, Scott? Uh, in the wintertime, probably less time than in the summertime um, because the room's colder. It's drier. Um, humidity in the room in the summertime will probably be higher. So I, there is no answer. It's simply okay. going to be you're probably going to have to experiment. And you're going to go, well, this only took a half an hour in the winter, but now it's taking 45 minutes in the summer. That's simply <laughs> because of atmospheric conditions. So right. there, there is no um, really no answer to that, Patrick. Um, but you get the you hit for the cycle today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so today, all four excellent four excellent questions or points. So thank you. You are our MVP for today. Yes, gold star mm -hmm. for Patrick. I'll just put it right there. There we go. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Scott. Um, and you didn't have any further questions that were nope. pre preemptive questions. Okay, there we go. That's it. All right. Well, um, I just want to say that I think we're at the last slide here. So you folks can come on back and, and join and visit us for our next webinar. Uh, that'll be Thursday, July 11th at 1 p.m. Central. We'll be talking about how to pair radiant floor heating with laminate. Uh, so we're always happy to share uh, details and information to help you prepare for any upcoming projects. And we definitely want to ensure, you know, the success of your project. We want to make sure that you're a satisfied customer. So happy to keep you informed. You folks stay tuned. Be sure to join us on that one. Uh, and then also uh, you can join us for daily training. You can join us uh, yeah, daily before, for more training. We, before we leave, Carolyn, real quick, you sure. kind of broke. You kind of broke up when you gave the date. So, in case oh, it was, okay. in case it wasn't my connection, but it might have been yours. It's it's uh, July eighth uh, because that, she was kind of broken up there. So, I just want to make sure that we made sure that we said the right date there. Excellent. Thanks, partner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you can join us daily for more training with our radiant experts as well on the latest and greatest tips for installs, uh, programming thermostats, how to choose the right controls for your projects and more. Uh, you can find us live at Central Time, Mondays at 4, uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 11 and 4, and then Fridays at 11 a.m. Uh, and that's for short live videos on various topics uh, like floor heating, snow melting, uh, installation of various products. And like today, you can come with questions, share them with us so we can get you the help that you need, okay? Uh, you moved right on to the next slide. This is always a real, real fun part, the monthly uh, promotion. Uh, this month, you can save 20% on Environ Easy Mats. It's a fun product that can go under most carpeted and traditional laminate and, and uh, floating floors. It's a product slightly different from our under tile product in its construction and the install, but it still serves uh, a great purpose for your radiant heating needs. So um, I'm sure that that's what we'll be talking about come Thursday because it's it's definitely that product, Thursday, July 8th. Saying it again from the cheap seats since we're talking about <laughs> baseball. <laughs> if you want more information on that product, you're more than welcome to visit us online at warmlyyours.com. Uh, even give us a call, myself, anyone here on our sales team. We're happy to walk you through the products and uh, talk about your options. And so uh, that being said, we value your feedback. Uh, again, Patrick, you know what? Patrick is really rooting to try and be a member of the Merlot Army. I think um, he's following right along Hired. on cue. We value, <laughs> yeah. we value feedback. And so thank you for that, Patrick. We do appreciate that feedback. Um, but uh, you'll receive an email shortly asking about uh, your experience during this webinar. Uh, we certainly appreciate comments, suggestions, uh, and, you know, even take time, just as Patrick did, just to show how uh, awesome my co-host was today. Presence made for TV and a voice for radio. He was born for this stuff. Um, but feel free, again, share comments, questions, suggestions on upcoming topics as well. We'd love to hear from you. And there it is, uh, our calling card, our phone number, email addresses, website, Facebook page, a call, shoot us an email. I can't say it enough. Reach out to us. We, we'd love to hear from you. Um, but any questions in general, um, you know, we, we make it personal. That's what makes us us, I believe. I was one of the first uh, three sales representatives hired here, and I really think that that's what's always made my job really special is that we get to talk with you directly. We're just a click or a phone call away. So um, in the meanwhile, thank you for joining us. My name is Carrie Lynn, and I'm Scott. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. And uh, we'll be back online with you soon. But we certainly appreciate uh, that opportunity to connect with you today. And uh, as always, stay uh, warm, 
And? And be radiant. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.